Hello, my name is Paul from Project Smart Home. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the Tesla fleet integration in Home Assistant. Uh, big shout out to Brett Adams, who's created this as of the August release in 2024. So what I'll do is I'll start by showing you the dashboard that I've created and the way that I'm presenting the information in there and all the, all the goodies that I'm kind of surfacing up in that dashboard. Um, just so kind of give you the art of the possible and what, what you could do with the integration. The integration itself does the car and the battery, Tesla car and battery. I'm just focusing on the car in this video. Uh, what I'll do then is I'll take start to take you through the components in uh, Home Assistant that you'll need to have installed, such as button card and mushroom integration. And then I'll take you through the coding that I've used to present this information into the dashboard. And don't worry, I'll provide all the coding and I'll walk you through what it all does. Uh, I'm not a coder myself, um, but I found it pretty easy to, to pick up and understand what's going on for this particular situation. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to go off and install the integration yourself and come up with some lovely dashboards. Uh, if you do, then let me know how you get on and I'd love to hear some feedback. Thanks for watching. What I'll do then is I'll start by giving you a bit of demonstration of, of my dashboard and what I've done with it. So hopefully on the screen you can see um, Home Assistant, my Home Assistant dashboard on my mobile phone, which is where I tend to use um, Home Assistant. I don't have any displays and tablets around the house. Everything is kind of built around this view on my phone. So I've created uh, a button in the middle here called Tesla. <clears throat> and this is where my dashboard lives. So at the top of the screen, I've got the battery display, probably the, one of the most important things you need to know how much um, battery power, energy you've got in the car. So if I click on that, I can see kind of the history of um, how much power has been available in the car. And then beneath this, um, I've got an image uh, kind of a top-down image of um, a Tesla vehicle and then around that I've kind of built up the information that I want to see on the dashboard. So I guess starting at 12 o'clock I've got the status of the car whether it's locked or not and then that icon changes based on um, the status of the car. So if it's locked then it says locked, if it's unlocked then it'll say unlocked and the icon changes to red. And I'll, I'll show you some screenshots of that in a minute, how that actually works. And then going round to the right, in the top right hand corner, I've got the outside temperature. So at the moment where I live, it's 12 degrees Celsius. And then continuing on to the right, I've got the front right driver's tire pressure, 41 PSI. And then below that, I've got the door, and the window status, so whether they're closed or open. And again, I'll show you some demonstrations of that later, um, what happens when the door is open and the icon color changes to red. So it's you can see that it's open from the text changing, but also you can see because the icons change to red as well. Um, and the same for the back door, uh, same again for the back uh, driver's side tire. And then I've got statuses on the boot or the trunk, uh, boot in the UK. <laughs> um, the, the trunk is closed. Uh, I couldn't find a suitable icon for that, so I've just put a boot on there to, to represent that. And at the front, just under car locked, you can see the front is closed as well. And then in the middle, the temperature is the cabin temperature. So in the car at the moment, it's 70 deg 17 degrees Celsius. So you could see on a cold day or maybe even set up notifications if you wanted to, to say something like, you know, if you're going to use the car today, it's cold outside, cabin temperature is, I don't know, five degrees. Maybe you want to preheat your car. So that might be quite a cool automation to do. And then on the left hand side, it's the same again, front and rear tire pressure and whether the doors and windows are closed or open. Uh, at the bottom, I've added a few more bits of information. So the first one at the moment says away. So the status there is, you know, where the car has been. And when I click on that, it 
goes to you know where the car is so if you've got zones set up on your map in uh, home assistant it will then reflect where it is so if the car is at my work for example then it would say my work uh, if it's at the shops and it would say shops you know some of the some of the areas that you've named on your map it would kind of reflect that rather than just saying away and then windows it's the status on that is that they're all closed the power it's not connected to the charger at the moment it's disconnected and if i click on that you can see it's disconnected um, the range is the next one so i've got 237.8 kilometers of potential range left in the battery which i think is a useful thing <clears throat> and then the last three things at the bottom are how much energy is being put into the car at a particular time what ampage is going into the car if you're interested in that sort of thing and then the um the um distance that the car's traveled since i've bought it so it's done 5317 kilometers um so that's that's the dashboard that it is as it is at the moment um and I'll, I'll now move on to showing you some kind of example screenshots of what it looks like when doors are open and the car's been unlocked and those sorts of things thanks so this first example um so you can see at the top on this image uh, the battery's got 100 percent battery in it and power in it and at the bottom you see the red icon with the window open so you can see the windows have been left open and if you look on the middle image you can see that the window the driver's windows open the driver's back windows open the offside windows are open as well um, so i couldn't work out a way to get those icons in the middle map to change color so i've added this at the bottom so we can see visually that it's red so the windows are open so move on to the next one so in this example, you can see the battery levels changed to 76% um, and the car is showing as unlocked. So in this particular example, the icon has changed to red. So we can see clearly that the car has been left unlocked and you could set up notifications for that. But I think in the Tesla app, you get those notifications anyway. So it's kind of up to you whether if you can have this on your phone, that's one thing. But if you've got a dashboard in your house, then it may be that you want to have um, a notification pop up as well somewhere to, to let you know that the car's unlocked. So in this example, you can see at the bottom here, the um, location icon has changed to Aldi. So at this point in time, I've popped out to the shops and the cars are Aldi. So it's quite handy for people to see where the car is and wh whether you're on your way home or not. And you could kind of track that as well. So another potentially useful icon to have on the desktop so in this ne next example we can see at the bottom now that the car is charging so the the status of this icon at the bottom has changed to charging you can also see at the bottom the car is using six kilowatts of energy and using 25 amps so again quite useful information Before we start then with the installation of the components that you'll need to get the dashboard up and running, uh, let's have a look a little bit of a look at the Tesla fleet documentation um, because you need to make be aware of some of the things that are in here. Um, so as I said earlier, the integration covers both the Tesla car and battery as well. Um, so this rate limits is something to be aware of. So it says in here that Tesla restricts open source integrations, which only allow 200 vehicle data requests per day. The integration will initially, initially poll every 90 seconds, making vehicle data requests only when the vehicle is awake. Um, so when I was first setting this up, I thought I had a problem with the integration because I was obviously doing lots of testing with things and I, I got to kind of mid-afternoon on the day I was setting this up and I started to get all of my sensors, sensors and diagnostics information was coming back as unknown so I thought I'd broken it but I think it was down to this um, polling interval so if it can't if it's used up those 200 requests in a day 
don't, don't think you can get any more data. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, the next thing is this command signing. So um, in my dashboard, and I'll show you in a minute, when you do the integration, you can choose to install um, just kind of the sensors and the diagnostics information, or you can also choose to configure the Tesla using this integration as well. But you'll see here certain vehicles, including all vehicles manufactured since late 2023. So that includes mine because mine's only well, it's less than a year old and we're in 24 now. Um, require vehicle commands to be encrypted end to end and signed with a private key. The Tesla fleet integration is unable to perform this encryption at this time. So certain features may be disabled or throw up exceptions when used. So I've gone through all of the settings on mine and I can't um, set anything on my Tesla car using this integration. It's pretty much just view read only information. I think um, Brett has got some plans to change this, I believe in the future, but as things stand today, it's, it, just accept that it's in read only mode and you can do lots of useful information with that. So with regard to the entities, there's a full list of entities, sensors um, and diagnostics and various other things that are available here as part of the integration. Not everything is enabled by default. So as I've gone through my demo and as you go through this yourself, then it may be that you need to um, enable some of these sensors if you want to make use of them. Um, so, for example, the, the tyre pressure warnings, I've enabled those sensors. Um, yeah, and that's it. I don't think I've enabled anything else in here. But worth having a read through this documentation just to make sure you're comfortable and you know what you're getting into. Um, some additional sleep information about the model s and x but mine's the model y so i haven't really digested that um, so yeah have a, have a look through that before you get started so let's go through the installation of the tesla fleet integration so into settings devices and integrations and then add integration so it's a native home assistant integration so we can type in tesla and then select Tesla fleet from the list. You then get redirected to the Tesla website. So if you've got a Tesla vehicle, then you will have a Tesla account already. So just use that account, that um, username and password that you've already got set up. Then once you're logged in, what you'll have to do is give permission for the integration to have access to vehicle information. So the top three options are for the vehicle itself and the bottom three are for the power wall. I've got a power wall as well, so I've kind of selected everything. But have a read through these and make sure that you're happy with what you're signing up to. Um, as I said, the it's only kind of the uh, information that you can make use of at the moment. You can't send commands to your car. You then need to link um, Home Assistant to the account. And that's it, pretty straightforward stuff. So once that's done, you can select where you want the um, integrations to appear in Home Assistant. And then the integration will be available in your Home Assistant. So let's go into this now and have a little, little, little bit of a look about what's integrated. Let's have a look at the settings then that we get as part of the Tesla car integration. So let's have a look at the controls first. So these aren't available yet uh, and you don't have to install this part of the integration or not, but you can see that you've got the climate settings there and I've just switched one over and he says this vehicle requires command signing, please see documentation. So we looked at the documentation earlier 
and we know on my model 2024 Tesla Model Y that this isn't going to work. Um, so um, these are kind of just, just there for show at the moment. But you can see, hopefully in the future, we'll have access to some of these settings natively within the dashboard. So there'd be an ability to set climate control. That would be quite cool, you know, cold mornings or maybe hot days. You can automatically get the car to cool down or heat up, and uh, depending on what's going on in the world. Set your heated seats, front and right, front and um, driver side. Wake the car up and the window settings. And these are the additional uh, entities that aren't enabled by default, but you can obviously click on those and enable those yourself if you want to make use of those. And from a sensor's point of view, it's got the battery level, the range of the battery, um, charge energy added in the last session, charge power at the moment, not doing anything, it's not charging, it's disconnected. Um, and then the outside temperature, inside temperature, and then the status. And at the moment, there's nobody in the car, which is lucky because it's sat in my drive doing nothing. Uh, and then again, some additional entities that you could add into Home Assistant if you wanted to make use of those. And then from a diagnostics point of view, you saw my dashboard that I'm making use of some of these things as well. Um, the current charge rate and whether the doors are open or not or closed for the windows and doors. And again, lots and lots of other um, entities that you could had, add to your dashboard if you want to make use of those. So to get the custom dashboard working in the way that I've shown earlier, then you'll need to have a couple of hacks add-ons. One is button card, which I'm installing here. Another one is called mushroom. Um, and I'm making use of both of those within my template and custom dashboard. So if you want to kind of follow my dashboard exactly, then you'll need to have these two things installed. And while I'm just going through this, um, I'd like to just thank Yo-Yo Tech for his video on creating a Tesla dashboard because essentially he's, he's pointed me in the right direction to get mine up and running. So I'd suggest having a look at his video as well. So for anybody that's used hacks before, you know once um, the hacks have been installed, then it's best to do a restart on your system before you start using it. What I'll do now then is take you through the um, custom dashboard that I've created. So in Home Assistant, on my front dashboard, as I said earlier in the video, I don't tend to use the dashboard on my laptop or any other devices. It's purely for mobile phones, therefore it looks, looks a little bit ugly on here. But essentially, um, I've created this Tesla icon on my desktop here. So if I click in that, it takes me into the dashboard. Um, so what I can do in here, if I edit this, it says three parts to my dashboard. The first part, which is the gauge. The second part, which is the, um, the buttons dashboard. And the third one at the bottom here is the um, mushroom chips that I'm using to give me this specific information that I'm I find interesting. So the first one is a gauge. So at the moment you can see the Tesla's got 68% battery power in it. So if I edit that, we can see that um, I'm using the Tesla Model Y battery level. So it's sensor.battery underscore level. So I've added that into this integration. Um, so with regard to the gauge itself, I want to display the needle. So that's on there, showing me exactly what um, percentage it's at. And then for me, I've said that it's green if I've got more than 70% power in there, energy in there, um, and it's yellow between 
uh, seven, sorry, 30 and 70%, and anything below that is red. But as you can see from this, it's completely configurable and you can put whatever you want in there. So I have also created an automation to let me know if the cars come home, so it's entered the home zone and um, the battery is below 65%, then I've set up an automation to say notify the house on our Google speakers uh, to, to let us know that you know we've returned home, haven't plugged the car in, and it could do the top up. So I'll show you that in that uh, automation a little bit later. So that's the first part. I'll then, I'll come back to the, um, the middle buttons card option because that's probably the more complicated one of the three. Uh, and then at the bottom, I've got, or the bottom, of, yeah, number three on my list of cards in this screen is my mushroom chips. So in here, I've created a horizontal stack card, which is just a default standard card that you've got available in Home Assistant. And then I've been adding these chips in here. So as you can see, I've got um, the Model Y location, which is the first chip here. So the, the, the entity I'm using is Tesla Model Y location, device tracker location, and I want to know the state. And then what I've done here is, um, if I click on that, that button, that chip, then it takes me to the map and I can see exactly where the car is, because if it's in an away state, away could mean anything. So if I click on that, then at least I can see where it is. Okay, um, second one is for the windows. So I'm using a template this time. So this is this is one where the, um, the icon will change color. So I'm using um, a template icon called Windows Closed. I'm using the windows cover dot windows entity and then i've got a little bit of code in here that shows basically if the cover windows entity is open then set the icon color to red so as you saw in my demonstrations at the beginning of the video if the if the, the windows open that icon turns red and the state, the state of this um, uh, mushroom chip is looking at the entity covered up window. I don't want it to do anything when that's clicked upon. Next one is for charging, um, which I've got up here. So it's disconnected at the moment. So I'm using the sensor.charging entity, the default symbol's been given, and the default behavior, so it'll take me into the um, entity details when I click on that. If I click on this, yeah, it takes me into the state. Go back to the chip editor. Uh, the next one is the battery range. So again, you start, should get the gist of this by now, hopefully. Um, sensor estimate, bet, battery range. And you can, you can get these um, entities from the integration dashboard. Remember, I was looking earlier and you can see the diagnostic sensor information. So rather than trying to work out what sensor you're looking for, you can just go through those and copy the sensor from those pages. So just purely displaying the state of that. So I know there's 235.8 kilometers of range available in the battery at the moment. And then the charge power is sensor.charge underscore power. Nice little lightning icon there to denote power. And when I click on that one, it tells me uh, how much power has been put into the car. And then the last two is around the current. So current ch um, charger current, 
So sensor dot charger underscore current and the default behavior when I click on that, it will take me to show me how much current the cars um, had putting it into its last session. And then the, uh, the last one I've got in there is the, um, how, how many miles or kilometers the car's done. So this is sensor dot odometer. So that's the chips, the mushroom chips that I've used there. Okay, so the last one then is the, um, the main one where it's a bit more complex and I've had to do a bit more work on that one. So if I edit that, you'll see all of the code that's involved here. And I'll share this in the description below in the video so you can basically take that and set something up for yourself. But if I talk you through what's involved here, so we're using this cut and button card even. Um, so if you remember earlier in the video, we installed the hacks button card integration. So that's what we're using here. We're using a picture. So basically what I did was I just did a Google search for a Tesla Model Y, a blue one with a top down view, downloaded that image, and then what you can do in Home Assistant, if you've got file editor installed, you can go into that, scroll down to www and upload the file into this section here in Home Assistant. So when you, when you configure that within this template, you just have to specify forward slash local forward slash the name of the file that you want it to consume. And then the next section, so these, these are all different sections. So if I show you one section here, so this is for the car door lock. So this is this on the right hand side here, this is this top section here. So basically I'm using a, a mushroom chip card um, and it's a yeah, chip card here, it's a template there's no actions when we click on it. Um, we're using this car door lock icon and you can see the state here. So basically, if the state of lock.lock, .lock, which is the entity in Home Assistant for the doors being locked, if the, if the state of that is unlocked, then put it to red. And this is the context we're using lock.lock. .lock. So that's basically telling Home Assistant in this section of my template for, for the doors, <coughs> that's how I want that to behave. Now if I scroll down to the bottom here under styles, this is where the configuration is held for where you want these, this information to be displayed on the screen. So the first part is the card itself. So the card width and the card height, height and the background. <coughs> and that's how the card's gonna be configured. And then the Tesla picture itself, so you can move this around. So if I move that, you can see it's moving up and down and from the left, there we go. So you can move that to wherever you want it to be on the screen and the width of the image. So the section that we've just been looking at for the Tesla doors, which is this bit at the top here, this description, Tesla doors, matches the description at the top, Tesla doors. So when the button card configuration is being created, it's looking for a matching section below. Otherwise, it would just drop the information into the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So we can see for this, I've got this 10 from the top. So if I put that 30, for example, it drops it down a bit. And you can move it left and right. and how wide you want the, um, 
image to look. And it's basically a rinse and repeat of all of those things. So every time you create a new entry up here at the top, so the next one for example is the left front tire pressure. So for this one I'm using a mushroom card template. The primary information is for the is the sensor dot tire pressure front left. I've rounded it down to zero because I don't want a 15 um, points afterwards and I've added the word the PSI at the end so it gives the description there you can see. And then at the bottom as we said earlier so if I look for left front tire pressure under styles left front tire pressure so this is then stating where I want that to appear, the 42 PSI to appear. So if I change that just to show you, it moves. Depending on where you want it. There we go, back where it was. Um, and yeah, just, just repeat that process for all of these different entities that you've got. So as I say, I'll put the code into my description below um, so you can have a play around and look at that yourself but if you've got any questions on that then please let me know hopefully that was useful so a little bit of a tip for you um, rather than creating all of this code in here which is um, I think leaves lots of room for error I actually created each individual section separately, then pasted them in. So, for example, for the te looking at this Tesla doors um, one again. So the the code that I copied in was from the type custom mushroom chip card downwards to the bottom of the section. Um, so the Tesla doors and card section is part of the button card configuration but if you were to copy this highlighted section into a mushroom card so if we do and then look at the code editor get rid of everything that's in there so this is custom mushroom chip card type so if I do that and then show in the visual editor you can see all of the code that I've put in here so I actually built these sections separately and once I can see that they're all working so this card car locked for example is displaying and functioning as I want it to I then went to the code editor, highlighted what I wanted to take across, copied it, and then you can drop it into your, the section of um, code that you want, want it to be. So just, it, it, it's so much easier doing it that way because if you try and do it in this template, you will make mistakes and you'll just break the whole thing. So if you do it separately, get each individual section working as you want it to, and then you can kind of be confident that you're not gonna break things. So hopefully that's a useful tip for you. The last thing I'd like to show you then is a little automation that I put together. So if the car arrives home and uh, it's less than a certain percentage of power left in the battery, then as the person enters the house, or within 10 minutes of them entering the house, they'll get a notification to say, battery's low, please can you plug the car in? So here is the automation. So the trigger, as I just described, is when the entity Tesla Model Y location, so where the Tesla is, changes to home, 
so when the Tesla arrives at home uh, and the condition is the Tesla model Y is the device and then the condition is current Tesla model Y battery level as the entity so if that is below 65% then what we're going to do is wait for a trigger so we're up to 10 minutes for the trigger and the trigger is um, the front door sensor is going to open so assuming they've parked the car on the drive um, they've got some shopping out the car whatever and then they've come to the front door come in the front door the doors opened and that, that should then trigger because there's no point in this going off when they're still sat in the car out in the garden so this is kind of the secondary trigger and then if that trigger doesn't get picked up it kind of carries on anyway um, and then the action is in this case is while the Tesla charge cable and if you remember on the dashboard I showed you earlier there was um, an option to see when the charge cable was connected or disconnected so in this case while the condition of the charge cable is disconnected on the Model Y then continue to repeat this so to uh, annoy somebody into um, charging the car so what it's going to do is play on a group of speakers Google speakers that I've got it's going to so hello this is the Tesla my battery is less than 65 percent please can you plug me in charge I need some more energy so hopefully that'll persuade somebody to go and plug it in and it's going to repeat that every 10 minutes until the status on this condition changes to connected I've tried this out a few times and it works just fine so it's just a just a little idea of um, the types of things that you can do once this integration has been so that may be useful to some people. Thanks. Thank you for watching the video all the way to the end. Hopefully it was useful. I certainly enjoyed making it and it's um, great to have that integration. So thanks again to Brett Adams for producing that integration. I think it's got lots of potential for the future as well when we can start to send commands from the dashboard. And thanks again to YoYo Tech for getting me started with the custom dashboards um, for, the, for the Tesla integration. Uh, hopefully you found the content useful. If you do, then please consider liking the video and subscribing. Uh, it helps me, helps the channel and motivates me to do more videos. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully see you in the next video. Bye for now.